Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 63. If you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 7, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet Invoice Date Math. Now, we want to enter some dates here and see what's really going on. Because with invoicing, you have to do things like figure out when an invoice due date is, when the date of the final discount is given, and other um, date-related math problems. So let's just type a date. I'm going to type 1 slash 1 slash 1900. Enter. So when you enter dates, um, depending on the setting in your computer, most of us in America have month, day, year. And then I'm going to type 1 slash 2 slash 1900. And then I'm going to do today's date. Today's date um, the keyboard is control semicolon whoops semicolon like that whoop semicolon so I'm going to do control semicolon now this is a called format as you type so we typed a number a month a slash a day a slash a year and this one was done automatically. But when you do that, underneath there are integers. And the reason why is so that we can count the number of days between dates. So this is number formatting, and we've seen this so many times in this class. I can see up here that as I typed, I entered date number format. But how do I wipe it away to see what's really in the cell? You go and you apply general. <laughs> what? So the very first day of existence in Excel is January 1st, 1900. All right? One, two, and that's how many days? That's today, right? 40,859 days since January 1st, 1900. Now I'm going to Control Z. Uh, just to show you that this is true, you can type these numbers in, right? And then go up and apply date number formatting. And it knows what to do with those dates. By the way, there's a long date, too which shows the um, day and the month spelled out. So I'm going to try that. That's only number formatting. Those numbers, th that word Sunday and Monday and January, that's not in the cell. It's just that number one. This is a number format. Now, how do you use that? Because that seems kind of weird. It's very simple. If I were to highlight these two, I can see date. I apply general. So there's numbers under there. And this number is bigger than this number. So I'm going to undo, Control Z. Invoice, uh, this is the date on the invoice. This is the date the invoice is paid. And this is the number of days since the invoice date, which means we need to figure out how many days since the invoice date this invoice was paid. This is the paid date. Right? And it's always, when you're figuring out the difference between dates, it's always later date minus earlier date equals later date minus earlier date. It's always the one further through history minus the one earlier in history. Right? So five days. And that will become important in the next couple of videos because we're going to talk about cash discounts. Cash discounts are given when you pay your invoice early. And early is defined by the seller. So if they say, pay your invoice within 10 days, if we do a calculation like this, we're like, yes, we get the discount. Now, I want to right at the beginning here when we're doing this date math, if you count on your fingers, the seventh day is not included. So it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I just counted on my fingers. That's 5. Visually, it's this. When you're doing, and this in the textbook, they tell you how to do all these silly things by hand, which we don't do anymore in the real world ever. Well, I mean, I guess, you know, you know the knuckle trick, and there's a rhyme and stuff like that. But uh, you never include this date here. So there it is visually. Don't include that one. One, two, three, four, five. All right, here's a couple other examples. Invoice date. Oh, so when we get the invoice, there's a date at the top, and there it is. Number of days until invoice is due. So that'll be called net 30. That means you have to pay within 30 days. Well, up here, we subtracted these two dates to figure out number of days between. But guess what? Date math, date math works uh, in lots of different ways. I can simply, if I, here's the invoice date. 
I need to jump 30 days into the future and show the date right here. You simply add. And this is going to be what's called the invoice due date. So equals this plus that. Now you know why number formatting is so awesome. Because you know under that number is an integer, now you know why it works. And it will show you as a date. That is the due date. Here's another example, very important. If you want your discount, here's the invoice. That's the date at the top. And in the terms, we'll talk about this next video, it says if you pay within 10 days, we give you a discount. So I need to find what's called the final discount date, equals this plus this. By the way, I'm going to click Escape. It's perfectly all right to Alt equals and add them that way, too. Either way is fine. There's a couple other um, useful formulas in Excel. Okay, E date. So here's an invoice date, date on the invoice. And the, the invoice says just um, one month into the future, same day next month. So really, I want to say, you know, and you can do this in your head instantly, it's 12-7. But if you want to just be able to type any date here and have that pop out here, you use E date equals E date. And notice it's its start date, comma, and number of months. Now, this function's awesome for all sorts of things. Here, we're just doing same day next month, so I put 1. Um, oh, that should say, let me enter this. That should say minus 1. And this one should here should say minus 1, too. Here's what I mean. Sometimes if, in other situations, if you put a minus here, it goes backwards a month. So it'll show 10, 7, right? We don't want that. If it was uh, two months, um, you'd put a 2 here, and it will tell you two months in the future and go to the next year even, right? right. But for our application in this class, it's simply that's, that's what I do. And then there's an end of month. And this will come in really handy. We'll learn the end of month convention for calculating uh, cash discounts. And so here it is. Now notice I picked, well, let me just do this. Let's do 1, 2, 2012. Now everyone can look at that date, and you can immediately say, well, I know what the end of the month of January is, right? It's 1, 31, 2012. So let's do it. There's an end of month, A, E, O, end of month. And it says same thing as E date, start date, whoop, and number of months. Now I want this month. Minus 1 means last month. 0 means this month. 1 means next month. And it will tell me the end of the month this. This is also a great function if you're doing financial statements. You have the start date, and then you have all these. You need to say for the period ending or for the month ending. And then so this function can always calculate the proper end of month date from an input date. But watch this. This is what's so cool about this. Every four years is leap year. So next year, I'm shooting this in 11, 2012, February is a, a leap year. So if I put in 2-2-2012, uh, it knows leap year. It will always calculate the proper end of the month. All right, so that's just um, the mechanics of how to do date math in Excel. In our next video, we'll start applying it to invoices and what's called cash discounts. See you next video.